this tutorial is for the folio, the um, trifold folio using Country Bunny. Um, but this time I'm going to use the um, Ireland Forever paper. We're going to start with the cover and it, you'll find that it kind of comes together really quickly and it's really easy. Now there are two different ways you can cover your chipboard. I'm going to go kind of back to that old traditional way where it's one long sheet of paper. But if you want to do the individual pages like Tammy uh, from Country Craft Creations does that will work uh, just as well. I just wanted one long smooth piece of paper though and didn't want to see the individual pieces on the outside. So the measurements I give you are for one long piece. The chipboard pieces two that are excuse me three that are six by eight and two that are one and a half by eight and go ahead and put adhesive on the back of those. And then the uh, cardstock for, I shouldn't use pink paper, it shows up weird on here. Um, the uh, cardstock for the cover, you're going to need two at 10 by 12 and two at three and a half by seven and seven eighths. And those are the ones that will cover the spines on the inside. Um, we're going to end up using every amount of the length of this paper. So when we overlap it with glue, we want to make sure we just connect it with an, like an eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch overlap. So here are my two pieces. I'm going to connect them at the uh, on the 10 inch side and I'm going to use the art glitter glue and you don't want much of an overlap because like I said we're going to need the full length of the two pieces put together. So you can see about how much glue I put on there and I'm going to use the grid on my board here to line it up as neatly as I can. And I think that'll be good enough. Have my, with black paper, I need a dry wet wipe handy so that the glue when it if it seeps out I can wipe it up real quick. Alright so I do want to burnish this real well make sure that it's adhered. So I'm going to be using my spacers as one inch um, borders around the edge so it's easier for me to place my chipboard on the paper. I'm going to try and adjust something real quick here. Is that okay? Let's try that. Uh, one more thing, let me try just a second. Uh, nope, not that way. This is like a fluorescent orange. I'm trying to see. Okay, uh, let's get going here. <laughs> so we're going to, the layout will be a large piece, the one and a half, a large piece, the one and a half, and a large piece. Okay. And we're going to try and get an, an inch border on the side and on the bottom. So I'm going to just kind of lay it out to make sure. Now you do want to put um, about a fourth of an inch space in between each piece of chipboard so that it folds up without cracking. So I just want to make sure, yep, we're going to have plenty of room. Okay, so we do want a one inch border. So I'm just going to lay this here on the side. And I'm going to get the other one and lay it on the bottom just to kind of keep my paper straight. And I'll remove the backing of the score tape. You know what? I'm going to use the grid on my board, I think, to the side.
And you want to burnish that on. Now, when you, I put my next piece on, I do use the score tape as a spacer so that I have the right distance between each piece of chipboard. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that down right up against that chipboard. Okay, let's go ahead and place one of our one and a half inch spine pieces next. I have a, I had to paper or piece the score tape onto this one so it's a little bit more time consuming taking off the back. I love those score sheets just because it's so much of a time saver and the paper lays so much nice, so much flatter. You don't have any ripples. All right. So then we'll just lay this right up against that one fourth inch piece of score tape. And then once we have all the pieces down, I'll go back. This is too dark now. Uh, let's see if that's okay. Um, I'll turn it over and burnish it some more on the other side. So again, the one fourth inch between each piece of chipboard. Now a larger piece, one of the six by eights. down a little bit. Now the next spine piece. And I don't like to waste any score tape so that's why I piece together every little piece. I don't throw it away. One more. And then if you have any overhang of score tape, just make sure you tuck it around the edges. And I'm gonna, oh, guess what I forgot? Fourth inch score tape. That's next, just to help with the spacing. And it makes the paper adhere well in the uh, creases. Try that again. One last piece. Pretty darn close. It's not quite one inch, but that'll that'll still work. Some people only do a half inch. Anyway, I like a one inch border, but it'll still work even if it's like a half an inch. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and burnish it real well. Scraps. Alright. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take off the backing in between here before I forget. As I start to wrap, sometimes I forget and then I regret it later. So let's just do that now. Remove all these backings. have a little bit of paper backing in here. See if I can get that out of there. It doesn't make, probably won't affect anything, but it bothers me. Come on. Ugh. There we go. Never give up. Got it. Okay. That one came out smoothly. And this one will too. All right, perfect. So what I like to do next is run a 1 fourth inch piece of score tape around the perimeter of the chipboard. And when I do my cover like this, I also like to do the score tape around the perimeter of the black paper. When I wrap everything separate, I use more art glitter glue than I do with, than I do with this style, um, method, but I'm still a score tape girl when it comes to this long sheet. So, one fourth inch tape from one end all the way to the other. Flip it over, do the same on the other side. We'll end up doing all four sides. It's important to burnish as you go. You want, especially your cover, that gets the most wear and tear, I think. And it's the first thing people see, so it takes, it's worth it to take a little extra time to make sure that you do a nice job. So I am gonna lay the perimeter of the black paper with tape also. I don't have to go all the way to the ends because I am gonna be mitering those corners. So I just usually go to about the end of the chipboard. And continue around all four sides. Okay. Last side. Once again, I'm going to burnish the backing, or you know, make sure that that tape is adhered real well. All right, so now what we need to do is miter the corners. And I use a blade and I have this tool uh, that helps guide me so I know how much to cut. You do not want to go all the way to the corner. Oh, sorry, I bumped the camera. Um, you don't want to go all the way to the corner of the chipboard. You do need to leave about an eighth of an inch of the paper so that your car chipboard doesn't peek through when you are wrapping it. So this just is a guide for me that I got it from Etsy, I believe. So this is about how much you need to leave. Don't go straight right to the corner, about an eighth of an inch. All 
four sides get the mitering. Some people like to cut out squares. You are, if you're a follower of Tammy on a regular basis, you know that that's how she always does hers, and it works out really well for her. I, it works out for me too. I just kind of like the look of the angle. All right. Not that you're going to see it that much anyway, once you put your pattern paper on, but I'm a creature of habit, I guess. Sometimes I do the square. Okay. So I like to train my paper to fold, so I'm going to lift it up and over, kind of bend it. Then I'm going to take my burnishing tool and crease it even more. want it to have a nice smooth finished edge. Okay. And like I said, all four sides. Just bring it up and over. Stand it up so it knows where to fold, bend. And then take your burnishing tool and finish going over it so it has a nicer, crisper edge. And even on the short end. So I like to start with the long sides. I know I'm not all the way in camera, but hopefully you'll get the main idea. Once we get the cover made, I can scoot it over so you can see the, all of it that I'm working on. So I'm going to remove the backing of the long side and the two uh, short sides on my chipboard. And before I remove the backing on the cardstock, I like to run a bead of glue up against the chipboard so that the paper sticks to it and has a nice smooth edge. And I just kind of let it sit there and soak in a little bit. Then I go ahead and remove the backing on the paper. And I also fill in some glue in between my score tape and the chipboard. So I just like to fill it in. I like to have plenty of adhesive so that my book stays together well. I don't like wrinkles, so we want to make sure when we bring it up and over, we really smooth it out. I start in the center and then I push up and out. And we burnish, burnish. I want it to really adhere nice and strong. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my bone folder along the edge to smooth that out and so that the paper sticks nice to the chipboard. Then I do the other long side the same way. Run that glue up against the chipboard. And fill in glue in between the chipboard and the score tape. This 
start in the center and then smooth out towards the edges. So I hold it there and then I just kind of bring my hand out and up at the same time if that makes sense. And voila, smooth. Through the edge. Now the way I did mine, I do have to tuck this little excess paper around the corner of the chipboard. We do not want our chipboard showing on the corner. That's why you have to leave that little bit of a gap. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so just make sure that goes down and around. burnish the side. Now this is artisan so it's a little bit more, well not a little bit, it's very durable and stronger than some of your papers that you might get at one of the other stores. If you don't use artisan you have to be careful. You don't want any ripping. Almost done with this cover already. sure that that paper is tucked down over the chipboard. our cover so we do want to make sure that we have everything nice and smooth so let's go ahead and place the two pieces that are three and a half by seven and seven eighths we'll center those over the chipboard um, you can put the score sheets on top of this so that it lays nice and smooth I'm kind of stingy with my score sheet, so I am just going to use the individual strips. Um, I'm going to use 3 8 and I put the score tape on the chipboard also. So I put it on each side so that we don't have any lifting and no buckling. So I'm going to place, don't go all the way to edge to edge because you don't want it to stick through and show through. I do put one in the center also. I'll do that in just a second. And then one right here in the middle. And see, I also put adhesive on the back of the paint, the um, cardstock. So it's going to stick and it's not going to go anywhere. Repeat the same process on the other spine. And one in the center. Burnish it down. 
so when I put my score tape on the cardstock, I make sure I go around the perimeter so that it's going to lay down nice and flat. And then I put some the opposite direction. Um, this one I'll just use one fourth. Why? Just because I have more of it, I guess. <laughs> So around the perimeter. All right, and then I do put some in the center. So what we don't have covered here, it'll be covered on the book. Now when we remove the backing, we'll have to make sure that if there's any glue sticking or tape sticking out that we tuck it under. So you're going to do the same thing with the other sheet and then we'll put them on the, uh, onto our book. I placed one down already on the left hand spine, remove the backing on the chipboard and now I'll remove the backing, remove the backing, excuse me, from uh, the paper. And then we want to make sure that we center it and have the same amount of paper on the bottom as the top. So like we want to make sure it's even centered. And I have a little bit of tape hanging over, so I'll just pluck that over. There too. Right, and uh, center side to side, top and bottom. And burnish. So we want our books uh, the paper to tuck in to that and um, attach to that tape that we had in between the chipboard pieces. I'm going to use this one instead. So I just kind of burnish and tuck as I bring this up to stand up. Careful so you don't rip the paper. Okay. Then I'll do the same thing to the other side. When you start to fold, you'll find that space. Start tucking the paper in as you bring up the side. Okay, there's one side. And that's the base of our cover. Now before you do any matting on the front, we will have to put our ribbon on before we put the paper. I'm going to work on the inside first and then we can do the cover on the outside last. So I think it's easiest if we work on the two side covers first. I think I'm actually going to start with the back cover. 
So let me get you the measurements for the paper for the back. All right, so here we go. You'll need one piece at five by nine, uh, one at five and a half by eight, one at five and three eighths by eight, four at four and a half by six, and one that is six by four. So you might want to take a screenshot or write it down. Okay. And we are going to do some scoring. So if you want to get your scoreboard ready, I'll move this off to the side. And let me, I have a certain scoring tool I like to use. Okay. So let's start with the uh, five by nine piece. And on the nine and a half inch side, we're gonna score at one half on each end. So I like to score at half, and then I turn it around and do it at half again. You could do it at eight and a half, that's fine too. Okay, so we'll move that one to the side. Go ahead and get the uh, five and a half by eight. Five and a half by eight. We're going to place the five and a half inch side and at the top and score at one half. Take the five and three eighths by eight and half inch again. Sorry, I got to look at my notes. I don't want to do, tell you anything wrong. Okay. Then you have uh, four that are four and a half by six. And on the four and a half inch side, on the four and a half inch side, we're going to score it a half on all four pieces. So you can see why this is kind of an easy book. The scoring is easy. Just a lot of flaps and attaching them. And one more. Half inch on all of those. And then we have a six by four piece. And on the six inch side, I'm trying to decide what that one's for. Let me take a look. I think this is the one we have to score on three sides. Yep. We're going to score that. It's a good thing I checked. I would have forgot to tell you that. On the six inch side, score at half and half on the other side. And then with the four inches across the top, score at one half. So that becomes a pocket. Okay. So now it's time to burnish all of your score marks. And then we'll taper. So I'm going to go ahead and score. I mean, uh, burnish. After you burnish all of your score marks, I do like to taper by taking a little snip off, like a little triangular piece at an angle here. Just like so, just a little bit. Now, the one that was four by six that we scored on three sides, we're gonna cut off the corner. So you see a square in the corner where the score lines uh, intersected. We're gonna cut that off at an angle so that it lays nice and flat, like so. And then go ahead and miter at the top by taking off an angled piece up to the score. So we're going to construct the belly band piece and then attach it to our book. 
and before you attach it to your book you're probably going to want to put your pattern paper on first it's just easier that way um, so what I need to do uh, this is the five by nine piece that's the base of our belly band that we're going to build off of okay and you have two pieces one was five and a half and one was five and three eighths so I'm going to have the five and a half on my left and the five and three eighths on my right because you want this one a little bit shorter so that it doesn't bump up against that and kind of bend your page so I'm going to go ahead and adhere the right hand side first so we're going to put adhesive on that half inch strip I'm going to turn this sideways because it's easier for me to see and we're just going to glue that to the very edge of that piece of paper and you'll see it does not quite go to the other edge which is what we want more issues I think I just need a new glue bottle this one has seen better days okay there we go and I like to go across the top here so that it has a doesn't lift when you lay it down and right up against the edge make sure look at top and bottom also so that it lines up okay burnish that on just a hair I'm gonna trim them I don't like that it's a little bit longer than the base I got to do a little surgery here let's see and I don't want to cut Ooh, perfect how did I do that nice okay hmm. okay I got just one little piece to get here okay it must have been off a hair on my measurement now the five and a half inch piece is actually going to go on the left hand side so I'll go ahead and open this get off that excess glue and I'm going to turn it sideways, it's just easier. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure mine's the same height so that I don't have to. I think I'm going to have to trim this one a hair too, just a smidge. I'd rather do it now than after I glue it down. Okay, same process, glue on the half inch strip all the way to the edge of that 5x9 piece. And lay it down, make sure it doesn't overlap anything. Open it up and get rid of any excess glue. Alright, so that should lay nice and flat for you. The front is where we're going to put the pocket. So that should go side all from one end to the other or from one side to the other side nice and perfect there shouldn't be it shouldn't be shorter it should be exactly the same width and we are going to place glue on all three of the half inch sides all 
the way to the bottom. And burnish. Catch that glue. It should dry clear, but I still like to get that off there. Okay, so this is what you'll look at and then this will open to the left and to the right and now we're going to stagger these. Each flap gets a, do a door at the top and a door at the bottom and on my book I alternated them. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I had this one on the top and then the one that opened at the bottom. So they were opposite sides. Top on the, this was at the top of the page, and I had one down here at the bottom. So that they were a little bit off. I gave a little bit more, I don't know, just kind of looks nicer, I think. But if you want to have them both open the same way at the top and have two at the bottom, whatever, it's whatever you like. Oops, okay. So this is an important part where you don't go over your score lines. So let me make sure. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to turn it. So this is my right hand side. I'm going to turn it so I can see it. And I'm going to place this one down at the bottom. Now remember we've already trimmed all of our half inch where uh, we've angled all of our half inch pieces that we scored. And we just want to make sure that we get it to the side and line it up like so. So I'm putting this one on the bottom. Okay. Now the other one, let me burnish that a little bit better, we're going to put at the on the other side over here and you want to make sure you don't go over that score mark so that your book will close nice and not have any buckling. So I'm going to make sure that before I push down to make sure it's adhered that I try and close the flap to make sure it's in the right spot. at the top. Don't want to go over the score. Yep, it's in the right spot, so now I can push down. you burnish it real well. Okay. Now on the left hand side, I want the, this flap at the top and this one will be at the bottom. So I'm going to turn this so that's easier for me. And this one goes at the top. Burnish it on. And then down here is where we'll put the other one. And again, we want to make sure that we do not go over the score mark. So we'll kind of 
lift it up uh, before we adhere it real strongly to make sure it doesn't have any ripples or buckling because it's over too far. paper is going to cover up all the glue I'm getting on here. All right. Um, as far as magnets go, before you put on your pattern paper, I have a magnet. I put the magnet on the middle and then the other one on the top so that it would stay closed. Even with this one down, it's still strong enough that it will keep it down closed. So underneath the middle then I also put the other one on top of this top flap. Then I put the pattern or the white paper on top. Over here, there's no magnet. Oh, that's a lie. I have a magnet right here. I can feel it. So where's the other one? I can feel the magnet. Oh. I just have one right here so that when this is closed, the other one, this one attaches to this one and I made sure I used an opposite pull. So I only use three magnets, one here, one here, and one here. Okay. You can do a tie closure if you want, but I am going to go ahead and use magnets. Let me, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern paper on off camera and then I'll show you how to adhere it to your book. Um, let me mark the magnets just to make it easier so it's not confusing. Alright, so there's going to be a magnet here in the center and then you want the match to be over here on this one so that it will stay closed and you also want this one to match up Oops on this. So you'll have one here. I'd put the magnet here, close it, have it attached to this side, then place a magnet here and make sure that it lines up in the right spot with the top that it's their opposite poles. All right, let me go ahead and get my paper going here. I decorated my back page off camera and I just have um, added some pearl trim and some lace and I had a metal flower and a bow. And then on the inside um, I had some cut aparts, some ephemera from another uh, collection that I got from Country Craft Creations a while ago. I think it's authentic. And then this one opens and then that's the paper I use. So I'm going to show you. Um, we're going to center it on this back page and you don't have to put paper down because it's going to be covered and then we'll just tuck in some pieces on the side so that we don't waste paper. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you know where you want to lay your book or the back page feature. So I'm just going to add some glue. I'm just going to do one side at a time just in case I have to move it. I don't want to have to clean up a glue mess. So I'm just, here's my, I'm going to go about right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lift that up and burnish it. And 
And all right, so now I'm just going to turn it upside down and I'm going to glue the other side down. Right, and just lay it down and make sure it's even. This one obviously we're just gonna have to push on because I can't lift it up anymore. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some clothes pins to make sure that it stays. All right, so I just took seven and seven eighths inch strips and I'm going to tuck that underneath here. And I'm going to move this one in order to do it. Take a spatula, just kind of make sure it's down flat. And I'll put that one back on. And now this one will just slide underneath on this side. And we want to make sure we don't go over the spine. All right. I had to reset my camera. I don't know if the color is the right color, if it's showing up right or not. I might have to tweak the settings a little bit. That's not good. <laughs> All right, let me try that again. this time. There we go. All righty. So there is our back. We'll end up covering our spines later because uh, we are going to be having our page with our, what do you call it, uh, acetate windows. So we'll wait until after we put those on. Okay, let's get started on the left hand side. Clean up my mess. So on this side, we do want to cover this with a piece of black paper because we're going to have the waterfall down at the bottom and doors at the top. We just want to make sure that no chipboard shows through. So I went ahead and cut a piece that was five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. 
That was 5 and 7 eighths by 7 and 7 eighths. I did not do this on my last one. I had to do some paper piecing. So, and let's just lay that down. Looks good. Burnish it real well. Alright, so let me give you some measurements for the front cover. You're going to want to cut um, 5 at 4.5 by 4, 2 that are 3.5 by 3 and 7 eighths, and 1 that's 1 and 1 eighth by 4.5. And I will go through the scoring. So the pieces that are four and a half by four are your waterfall pieces. And so what you want to do is place the four and a half inch side at the top of your scoreboard and score at one half. Okay, do that to all five pieces. Four and a half across the top, score to half. Now you don't need to uh, miter on this one. You're going to keep that half inch intact. You're not going to trim anything off there. Okay. And um, I did that already to my other pieces. And I went ahead and put 3 and 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths uh, paper on the top. And I just did white on the back. So I did that with four of them. Um, we do need to put a magnet on this one because it will uh, it'll be a magnetic closure. So I'm just going to take out my magnets. I need a positive and a negative. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and place the two together and I'm going to go ahead and lay one side down take the backing off these are the basic gray ones from the store um, actually I want it over about here let me show you. This will be our closure. So um, I'm going to go about in the middle, I think. It'll be easiest to cover. All right, I don't want to lose that other magnet, so I'm going to place it over by the closure. I am going to put a little score tape over the top just so it doesn't shift. Okay. And now that we have that done, we can go ahead and put the matting on. So I did, like I said, the pattern paper on the front. I have been inking it with black ink. I'm going to go ahead and adhere the front and that white piece to the back. Burnish that. Okay. 
and go ahead and put the white, the three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths piece of white on the back. So now you'll have to do all five of those. Make sure you keep track of your front one. And then you're going to need, here's your one and one eighth by four and a half. Put the four and a half inches across the top on your scoreboard and score at one half. And then the two that measure three and a half by three and seven eighths. Place the, there we go, place the three and a half across the top, score at one half on both of them. Now when I burnish the score marks on these, I am going to lightly taper. And when you put this together, let's go ahead and put the white. Um, what did I do these at? Two and seven eighths by three and three fourths. The white goes on the under back side. But we do have to put a closure and I'm using some ribbon. So I got to make sure you put that on before you place your pattern paper on the top. Okay, so I did one already, and I just want to make sure I line it up so I get my piece of ribbon in the right spot, and I'm just going to place some glue. Yep, perfect. And then again, I will place a little bit of score tape. Oopsie, I didn't let it wait long enough. And I'll put some score tape over that too. We don't want it to go anywhere. Okay, and then... Do I want I decide which I want it like this, I think. Yeah. Okay. And where's my pokey tool? I have too much stuff laying out now. There it is. All right, we're going to start putting the page together. And I'm going to actually start with the waterfall down at the bottom. So grab your waterfall pieces and we're going to start with the top. And so that's your magnetic one and you want to go down pretty much as close to the bottom as you can because we don't want these doors to hit each other. So we are going to want just a tiny bit of space. So we want it down as far as we can get it and off to the side here.
And usually I put my waterfall on a base, but this time, and then I just attach the base, but I'm not going to do that this time. So now we're going to line up each consecutive page and butt it up against this half inch piece that we just glued down. And it's hard to see, I know, because of the lighting on the camera. I'm trying to decide the order I want these. I think I want this white one next, maybe. Yeah. And we're going to keep doing that until they're done. And then we'll start filling in the paper on the top. So I'm going to lay this down and make sure that I'm happy with how it's lining up. And then I'll burnish it after I've made sure. Next one will be this one. This one was supposed to be the front, but I forgot to put the magnet on, so it's no longer the front piece. Okay, it's still lining up good. Next one. Butt it right up against that half inch. Check the bottom to make sure it's lining up before you push down too much. Whoopsie. Yeah, looks good. And we have one more. And that should be right. Perfect. Good. Alright, so you are going to want to put some paper, some pattern paper underneath here, but before you can do that, you need to put your belly band on. Okay, so I'm going to let that, set that to the side. So our belly band was the one and one eighth by uh, four and a half. We scored it at a half. This is going to be our closure. Perfect. Okay. And so, you know what, I wonder if I, because I put that magnet there, is that going to be, nope, I'm going to have to make mine longer because I put my um, magnet too far over. So let me, let me cut another piece real quick. Okay, I ended up making this one uh, five by one and one eighth and then still scored it at a half and so it's four and a half long because I had put my magnet too far over. So I put the magnet on top. This lighting is really bad. Hold on. Let me try and fix this so you can see better. Nope. Hmm. Where's that light? No, I'll put my hand here for a second. So I put the magnet on top and so I'll know where to attach it on my closure piece. So I'm going to go ahead and put my glue on. I haven't covered the back yet. I'm going to put my glue on the one half inch strip. And I'm going to butt it up against there and I want to make sure that it I'm going to go over and make sure it's straight. Okay. And so now I can take the backing off of that magnet.
and I'll just push this down on top and there it goes so now I can cover the back of this and I'm just going to use this brown piece and it will kind of because it's a narrow piece it will kind of buckle a little bit around the magnet but that's okay it's on the underneath side and where's my just want to make sure those corners get down so just kind of work with it give it a second to dry and I'm just going to kind of pinch around the edges so it lays down You can put clothes pins on there if you want. Just the edges. I'm going to add a little bit more glue on this one. It's pretty close to the edge. Okay. Actually, I like the pink one better. It's a little snugger. Snugger, is that a word? Okay, so you can place a piece down at the bottom. You just want to make sure that when you glue it down that you don't see any coming out from the top or the bottom. Maybe I need to zoom in. Light is really bothering me. Okay, so I'm just going to glue that down. Make sure you got don't go over the score on that closure piece. I want to make sure it covers. Yep, it does. We are almost done with the front and back cover. Okay, so now the doors at the top are going to go like so. We want to make sure that they don't bump into this, and we want to make sure that they meet in the center. So I'm going to turn my book sideways. That's easier. And I want to make sure that there's enough space that it doesn't hit this door. And, perfect, okay. So let's go ahead and put glue on the half inch piece. I really am a messy crafter, huh, that's this glue. even over here. Okay. And now we'll put the other door. We don't want it to cross over the gusset and we want it 
like so. That's going to be just right, I think. Eh, might be a hair. Okay. Alright, now the last thing you're going to do on that front cover then is decide on what paper you want to place in the center. And I'm going to use I will cut this and put that right here. Okay, and that's all you have to do with the front and back cover until you go back and if you want to add embellishments to the doors and stuff. So now it's time for the two uh, acetate frames and that middle section. We're going to go ahead and uh, move on to these two um, cell uh, not cellophane, <laughs> acetate window um, pages. So I'm going to make one with you. I've already made one. So this is um, the first one I've done. I still need to you know add some sort of embellishments around the outside but you're going to have one that opens to the left and then one that opens to the right. Okay, so you're going to need some paper. Let me show you what you're going to need. All right, so go ahead and cut two pieces of your cardstock at 7 and 7 eighths by 12. You are going to need two pieces of the acetate. Now I just had the uh, clear with the white stripe. Plain old clear would probably be even better in case you want to put like a regular photograph behind there. Um, those were four by six and a half. And then there were two pieces for pockets that are going to measure six and a fourth by four. So the first one is uh, your cardstock. The four by six and a half is your acetate. And then the two that are six and a fourth by four are also your cardstock. Okay. So let's go ahead and do some scoring. You're going to place the 12 inches across the top. And on one end, go ahead and score it 3 fourths. Turn it around to the other end and score it 1 half and 5 and 7 eighths. Okay. Grab your 4 by 6 and a half. And you're going to do this twice, obviously. Um, half, this is the six and a uh, fourth across the top. So a half, one turn, one half. So with the four inches across the top. And then turn it one more time. So six and a fourth is back at the top. And score it a fourth. So that's all the scoring. So let's do the pocket first because that's easiest and we're familiar with pockets. Go ahead and cut off miter the corner so that that square comes out and we did it at an angle. And I do miter the top so cut it at an angle to the score. Burnish those. Go ahead and move that off to the side and work with this one. So this one I need the three-fourths on the right because I already did it with three-fourths on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and score or burnish that. All right. So with this um, folded to the back, this is going to the fold over to the right. 
my right for this side. And let's burnish this underneath because that is going to seal our page. So it's going to look like so. There's your half inch, there's your three fourths. We're going to end up gluing this half to this side. Okay. Now, before you do any gluing, though, we have to prepare the window. So what I did is to cut out, I did one inch border on all four sides. So I took my spacer and I went up against that score mark and I took my pencil and I just drew a line and I rotated it. I want a one inch border on all four sides. So I lined up here draw a line. Now just go to the score. Don't go all the way to the end. So go to, up to that score on the half inch side and, and one more. Okay. So hopefully, yep, I think you can see that on the camera. So then I'm going to take my metal ruler and I'm going to cut out this square in the center. So I'm going to line up my ruler on that line that we just drew. And I'm going to take my cutter go ahead and rotate it. Line it up on the line. Uh, that one I need to do again. I went off the line. And on this side, I just want to make sure it's on the pencil mark. And don't move my ruler. Good. Yep. And the last one. So anything that didn't come all the way off, I'm just going to slightly cut that so it comes apart. And I don't want any pencil marks to show, so I'm going to go ahead and take my eraser and just go through and take out the pencil marks around the edge. going to go ahead and give this another burnish. All right, so I'm going to attach my piece of acetate on the inside here, and I'm going to go ahead and place one fourth inch score tape right up against that frame. Now this isn't a shaker, so it, it's okay if you have a little, well, you don't have to make sure that everything is totally sealed, that like no sequins fall out or whatever. So it's okay if it doesn't go all the way. Like see right here in the corner, if I was doing a shaker, I'd make sure that that was totally covered. And I do want to make sure it's a secure fit with that acetate. So I may put a little bit on my uh, clear acetate also. All right, I'm going to burnish that so it's on real well. And 
the acetate, remember, was four by six and a half, so it's going to lay right on top. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to put any tape on my acetate because that's a good enough stick. I'll, uh, it'll be fine. Like I said, it's not a shaker, so I'm just going to take off the backing. Come on. There we go. All right. And it's, my mine has lines, so I got to make sure that I do it evenly and that they're straight. And I'm going to go ahead and push down on that real well so it's got a good seal. All right. So that's what we're at right now. Now I do want paper behind here. However, I'm going to put it down after I close it so that this half inch gets covered. Okay. Um, actually, I'll sh I think what I'm going to do instead, um, I cut this. What did I cut this at? Five by seven and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and ink just the top because the bottom will be sealed and you won't see that. So I'll just put it. Okay, so what, I'm going to glue this down, but I'm going to leave this side open a little bit so that I can tuck this underneath, okay, like so. All right, so put glue except for leave about a fourth of an inch from the edge here so that when we put our page down, it will cover that half inch piece. Oh, come on, glue. It'll make more sense once you see what I'm talking about. So you see I left a little bit of space here that has no glue and I'm going to put this on and I want it closer to the top. Because it's easier to put this down when this is open. You can still do it. You can go ahead and seal this and then put your paper in, but sometimes I struggle with that. So now I'm going to put glue right here. If you want to miter this, you can. Um, I will just to show you what I'm talking about. If I can find my... There, yeah. This half inch, you can slightly miter. Like so. Now when I put glue on this, I'm going to tuck it underneath that paper like so. And it's just easier that way. Okay. So let me get my glue on here. Lift this up. Tuck this half inch behind it. And push down. Now, if it bothers you, you can go back and put a little bit of glue on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to put a little bit right here. And the bottom won't matter because we're going to close that off. Okay, let me make sure that's down. Now we don't want our picture to fall through or our supplies to fall through. So I don't, I'm going to put glue to about right here. So I have about a fourth to a half of an inch down from the window and I'm going to seal off this whole bottom part so nothing falls through. 
So let me kind of bubble that open. Okay, you can see how about like that, and push down. So now our bottom is sealed. And let's go ahead and put our pocket on the back then. I'm going to put mine, you don't want to go over the score, I'm going to put mine almost to the outside edge, almost. Not all the way, just a little, like a sixteenth of an inch from the edge. So put glue on those half inch strips. Almost to the edge. And burnish it on. Got some glue coming out. So you can just cover that how you want, the pocket, and then um, the back. I did white. I want to make sure that's down. So on this one, I did the pattern on the bottom and just white on the top. So I will do a pattern piece down here and white on the top here. So let me show you how I do these frames because I do like that angled look. Um, but if you try and do all four corners, it's tricky. So I just trimmed two corners, but it looks like I did not. It looks like I did all four. So let me show you. These are one inch borders on the side of the acetate. So cut your paper at seven eighths of an inch, your pattern paper. So I'm going to do these on the side and I believe there's I know there's seven and eight seven eighths of an inch across but how long did I do these let's go seven and three fourths so cut those seven and three fourths inches long do that real quick And let's go ahead and ink our edges. I'm using black soot. Okay, so let's just glue those down like we normally would. No cutting on these long pieces. No angling, I mean. Burnish that. It's always about burnishing. Okay, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Okay. 
Okay. So the other, the short sides are seven eighths of an inch also, but now we need to measure so that it goes from one end to the other. So we just want to make sure that it covers these two pieces. So mine need to be five and a, it's not five and a fourth. Mine, I'm going to have to go one less than five and a fourth. So let's see, 16, like three sixteenths is what I need. So let me cut a piece that's... Five. Let me, let me check it. Yep. And I'll uh, double check the top though because sometimes it might not be exactly the same. No, like this one. Oh, see. Ah, uh, yeah, just kind of. Maybe it is. Yeah, it's kind. It's almost almost five and a fourth. So I might just go a smidge, just a smidge shorter. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So here's what I do. I'm going to lay this down and line it up. So make sure that it lines up on the bottom and on the sides. And I'm going to put with a pencil a little tick at the angle at the corner of the frame. I'm going to put a little mark with my pencil. And I'll just know that that is the corner. It's going to go diagonal from here to the end, the bottom right-hand side. And then I'm going to put a tick mark here where it is at the corner of the frame. And then I'm going to get my cutter. And I'm just going to cut that at an angle. Now, can I see my pencil mark? Because this is dark. There it is. If you have any pencil marks showing, you might want to erase those. Go ahead and ink the edges. So, and then we're going to glue that down, and it looks like we did all four corners, and we did not. We cheated. That is so much easier than trying to get everything to line up. So, just make sure everything lines up and burnish and then we're going to do the same thing to the top uh, where's my tool oh, there it is all right so then we're going to lay the next one down And do the same thing. Tick mark at the corner. Where of the frame. I'm going to go ahead and get the cutter. Cut it at an angle. Go ahead and ink this one up now. And I'm going to turn mine upside down just so I can see it better. There we go. 
All right, and you can go ahead and decorate the back on your own. So I will add something on the corners or something, but this is what it will look like as it opens. And I gotta still decorate the back. Now, if we grab our book, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna end up putting this in our book. So on the left, these are one and a half inches. This is three fourths. So you can put this, center it in your spine area and glue it down. And then you're going to take about half inch strips and glue one of pattern paper and glue one here. Take a half inch piece of pattern paper and put it here. Okay, to cover up the black. Same thing on the other side. Put your glue on here. Lay this down so that the um, so the edge of the oh, it's hard to see with this light, huh? The three fourths inch piece goes right up to the fold in your spine. Oh, that lighting, you guys! I'm sorry. There we go. Right up to the edge and glue that down. And then you'll get pattern paper and put one on top here and put a piece of pattern paper right here. Okay, so it'll look something like so. All right, now, if you take a look, I'm gonna put those to the side and do that later. If you take a look at my original book, I have two flaps. And I gotta find the original book right here. So I have a die that Tammy used to sell. It was a tonic die that was to make a book. And it's in this shape and it came with progressively smaller sizes so that I could get the pattern paper to be a little bit less than the actual base paper. Obviously, if you don't have this die, you can um, make it square, you can a rectangular, you can just do rounded corners or get your um, border punches or whatever. Um, you want, but I think it needs a little something to showcase whatever it is that you're putting on this paper. So after I cut that out, I did cut out one inch strips, scored them in half so that I could attach them to the book. Okay, so let me show you, let me get mine cut and then I will show you how I um, adhere them to the book. Now when you open these, this looks like it's a pocket, but it's not. This is a mat and this is a mat. Okay, you can turn it into a pocket if you want. I was worried that it wouldn't lay as flat as I wanted, though, if I made it a pocket. So, all right, let me cut mine out, and then I'll show you how I attach them with those hinges. So those, um, what do you call those when we, um, uh, oh, stop, I know what it's called. Um, construction strips. All right, I'll be back in a second. These are what the dies look like that I use for these flap pages. So you might have something similar, like I said. Uh, for measurements, at the widest point, this one is like five and three fourths, and the length is about six and a half for the main one. Um, so I cut out two black pieces, and then you cut out four of the interior pieces. And when you're doing this, you have to remember that this one, one of them is going to go up. So if you put pattern paper, like uh, if the direction, if it's directional paper, when this one goes up, you want it to be the right direction. This one will be coming down. You want your pattern paper to be the right direction. So when I cut these, there's no way to attach them to the book right now. So it's okay to put on your top paper, but you got to leave the backs open until you put on your hinge piece or your strip. So I measured from here to here and it's about four inches. So these are four inches long. This is an inch and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and score these at three fourths of an inch. You can do an inch and then score it half. It's just your preference. But I had the scratch, scrap paper so I went ahead. So um, three fourths of an inch is what I'm going to score at because it's one and a half inches.
Okay. And let me get there it is. I go ahead and fold that on the score and burnish it. And also one of these strips will go on the top and on the other piece it will go on the bottom. So this is going to be my top piece. So I'm going to place this at the top. And I want it to go right up to the edge as far as it will go. Okay. So it will, the fold piece is at the top. So I'm just going to put adhesive on one side of that three fourths inch strip. And make sure I have it going the right direction so this will flip up. So yep, this is the one I want at the top. Just make sure that it's on there. Then once you have this on, you can put your patterned paper on the back. Okay, so again, this will be like this and it will flip up. The paper I'm going to use is this. So that one's not really directional, so it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Now if it was this, the music notes, it would. But I'm going to use that. Uh, am I going to use that side? I kind of like the notes. Um, uh, I'm going to... Uh, shoot, I don't know what... I'll just, I like the color on the other side. It brings in more colors. Alrighty, and do I want that on the top? I think I want to do it this direction. Okay, now it's the next piece that will um, put the hinge piece on the bottom of the flap because this will be underneath, so this will lift up and this will lift down. So I want the hinge on the bottom here. So this time, we still want the fold at the edge of our flap, but it's at the bottom of the flap, not the top. And I want it all the way to the bottom. Let me make sure that's right. Yep. And again, if you have directional paper for this, this side, this will be flipping down. So this, mine's not directional, but and we are almost done. I mean, we have the cover, which is kind of my favorite part because I like to do all the embellishing. Okay, my glue's getting clogged. There must be something in there. Yeah, it looks like I got it over on one side more than the other. Oh well. I did not center it very well. All right, so let's get our book.
Now we have to put these down before we do any pattern paper on the base. So then I'm just going to attach this. I want to make sure I put it at the very top and make sure that you have equal distance on each side. You shouldn't be going over onto the spine. So we'll glue that down. Then we're going to glue this one down. Oh, this one's going to be underneath. Like so. Okay, and then once you glue those down, then you can go in and decorate the base, the main part. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to do some finishing touches. Um, like I said, I still need to glue these in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do the gluing off camera and show you what the book looks like when it's done on the inside. And then we'll do the outside. The outside's really easy. It's just that you have to remember to put your closure if you're doing a uh, ribbon or seam binding on before you put on your pattern paper. So, all right, let me go ahead and do some things off camera and then I will be back to wrap things up. I went ahead and did all my decorating for the most part, I think, on the inside. Um, we are going to do the closure and you can't, that's why I saved the front cover and this inside piece right here because we have to tuck the uh, ribbon or lace or whatever it is that you're using underneath the paper. So I just um, put a piece of the cardstock or the pattern paper on the back. I had some sparkly paper that matched and then some shimmer paper that um, the gold that I thought went well with it and did that on each side. On the inside I just put I just put a few embellishments not a whole lot with a book like this you can't do too many because it does get too bulky. Um, then I have some lace and some trim. This is a cut apart from an old collection I have. And then this side opens. Oops, you can't see. Again, that's from an old authentic collection. Just put a little piece of uh, metal finding there with a little pearl. Did a little fussy cutting of the stamp. On this side, I just added some lace and a corner uh, piece. I had, um, I just did a cutout and glued that up there. Another cutout from that authentic line. <clears throat> this is from Tammy's store, the Country Craft Creations. It's that real sparkly shimmer paper. It's real thick and heavy. And then I just did a mat. Get up there. Um, then this, I just did some fussy cutting, another border piece, that same trim over here. I don't know if you can see it very well. I had a metal uh, leaf filigree thing, put a little flower on it. I had a saying from some, I don't know where I got that, but. So then I just put a gold bow at the top. Again, you can't put much on here because of your book won't close very well. And this was kind of flapping up. So I did put this, I don't know that I really like it, uh, but I just tucked it underneath there. And then I used that shimmery paper and this is open so something can go underneath. And I have some of the art glitter glue, um, what do they call that stuff? Um, let's, uh, the fantasy fiber. And I just put some of that behind the hat that I fussy cut. Okay. Um, this was from my, I had a die that I cut that leaf. Yeah, I wish I might take that off and put something down there. I don't know. Okay. So we are ready to adhere this. This has to be flat. Okay. And all I did was add a an area for a, a picture and I had a corner border um, die and before you glue that down you're going to put your closure I'm using um, this dot sheer dot it's from uh, Country Craft Creations I don't know if she still has it or not but that's going to be tucked oops wrong side on the right hand side okay so I'm just going to center it 
because then when you close it, it's going to uh, tie off to this side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to eyeball where I want it. Okay, and then I am going to also put a piece of score tape on top just to make sure that it stays down. And I'm just going to put that right here the very end. It's still drying a little bit. Take off the backing. Whoops, there. There we go. Okay, and just add adhesive. You can, sometimes I put score tape around the outside and then glue on the inside on pages like this just so that it lays nice and flat on the edge. I might do that on the cover actually. And I'm going to use plenty of glue. Sometimes I think I use too much, but I'd rather be a little bit too much than not enough. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure that it's lined up even. And I'm going to burnish that really well. And then, of course, I'll let it dry a little bit before I actually tie it, just to make sure it doesn't pull out. I've never had one pull out, but just to, to make sure. So I'm really happy. This book looks really classy to me. And I can't wait to decorate the cover, because that's one of my favorite parts. Alright, so now I'm going to line, have this closed, and now I'll know exactly where to put this piece because it'll just lay right on top of the other one. And again, I will use glue. And I'm going to get some score tape also. that down. Make sure it's on there, unlike last time where it started to pull up. All right, so here's my cover. So I had some of that sparkly paper I put behind, then the shimmer gold, and then this is the one that says pot of gold. I really like the blues and the green on here. And then I'm just going to lay that right on top and then I will go back and put, I can't leave a cover flat. I have to add some sort of dimension to it. So I think I am going to use the score tape around the perimeter just to make sure it does lay down well. Actually, I'm going to use my 3 8 instead of my 1 4 This spark, um, glitter paper. I got it on clearance at Hobby Lobby years ago, so it's about time I used it. But the colors match. In person, it's really a good match. I don't know if you can were able to tell that on the camera, but a little sparkle won't hurt anybody. So the only thing about this is you have to be really careful before you lay it down because, you know, I'm going to put some in the middle too. Um, because once it's down, you don't want to have, can't really pull it up to reposition it. All right, now the rest will be glue. And 
and I will probably just put a still picture at the end of this video so you can see what I ended up doing with the cover. I hope I remember. Um, because I won't decorate that on camera. That is sometimes a very long process because I have to go look through my stash. Then I put things down, go get more stuff, put stuff away, rearrange it. It's kind of, it can be very detailed. So we'll take the backing off of this. And now I'm going to fill in with glue. And I don't cover my score tape with glue. I just put it in between here. All right, so I'm gonna stand up here and eyeball it to make sure I get it in the spot that I want it. And that will do the trick. Oh yes, once I get flowers and I did pull some shiny stuff that might go, I don't know if you can tell how sparkly that is. Um, I have some crystal type things. Um, I have a handle that I found that I might put right there. We'll just have to see. Like I said, once I get started, I change my mind over and over and rearrange and go grab more stuff. and. All right, so I think that's the gist of it there. And then I will just tie that off to the side to keep it closed. I debated between white and black for this, but because I'm going to be adding some white flowers and stuff, I think I this I didn't want it to be so heavy looking, so that's why I went with that one. Let's let's just see if I can give you an idea of what it'll look like when it's tied. I love this stuff for closures. I don't know if I let it dry long enough, but you'll get the idea. And I'll probably have to, oops, I'll probably have to uh, trim the bottom a little bit. Yep, I'll have to trim it, it's too long, but there it is. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Um, this is the Forever, our Ireland Forever. This was the Country Bunny. You can see how totally different they look just using that different paper. Um, I will get this posted and if you have questions just leave a comment below and I'll try and get to you as soon as I can. And this paper again was from Country Craft Creations. Have a good one everybody. Thanks for watching.